Hey, Steve Stein from Guitarism here. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, what we're going to be doing is looking at a couple of different ways that you can approach memorizing the notes on your guitar, depending on what works for you and where you're at on your guitar journey. Um, but just a word of caution, it's really important once you start doing something like this to spend some quality time on a daily basis practicing so it becomes second nature to you. Okay, if you just practice it a little bit and it kind of goes away, it's really hard to memorize this sort of thing. So the first thing we need to do is we need to discuss the actual notes that exist on the guitar, then we're going to apply it to a string, um, and I'm going to give you the tools to be able to do that on all six strings, and then I'm going to show you another kind of unison octave trick that I do to try and teach people how to memorize the notes all over the fretboard. All right, now we need to break this into three different parts. Number one, we need to learn what the notes are on the guitar. Number two, we need to learn how to apply them to each string. And then number three, I'm gonna show you a little trick that you can do to try and memorize them across the fretboard, okay? So first of all, what we need to do is we need to learn the notes. Now, quite simply, I'm gonna run through this as quickly as possible. I do have other videos that go into this a bit more detailed, but we are dealing with 12 different notes on any standard instrument, the guitar, the piano, whatever it is that we might be talking about. So we have what we're gonna call prime notes. Those are the white keys on the piano, and those notes are A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. There's no H, there's no L, there's no Q, anything like that. It just goes from A to G. And then if you think about a piano, those notes would just keep getting repeated over and over and over in what we call octaves. So if you were playing the piano, it's okay if you don't, I don't either, but if you have A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, and then it starts all over, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, and so on, you're repeating those same notes in octaves. Well, the guitar also has octaves, okay? But we do also have the black keys on the piano as well. And the black keys, we're gonna call those sharps or flats, okay? Now, I'm gonna make this all very easy to understand once we get to the guitar, but just kind of follow me here. So if we have seven notes, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, and those are the seven white keys on the piano. If every one of those white keys got a little black key right next to it, we'd wind up with 14 notes. We'd have the white key A, and then a little black key, which is A sharp, which right now we're just gonna talk in terms of sharps. We'll get to the flats in just a second. Uh, C, if we went to the C on the piano, we'd have a little a black key called C sharp. And if we went to the G on the piano, we'd have a little black key called G sharp. So we'd wind up with seven white keys and seven black keys, which would give us 14 different notes. But we don't have that. You might have noticed on the piano before that there's a couple of spots where there's no black key in between the white keys. Okay, that's between the notes B and C and E and F. So if you follow my way of thinking for now, we'll, we'll come back around to this, but B wouldn't get a sharp and E wouldn't get a sharp on the piano, okay? There wouldn't be a little black key between B and C and there wouldn't be a black key between E and F. So if you remember it this way, this is how I learned how to do this a long time ago, is if I just remember that all the notes, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, if I think of it this way, all the notes get sharps or a little black key, okay? except for B and E, which spells the word B. B doesn't get a little black key, and E doesn't get a little black key, okay? So what I've got, if I think about it, it's kind of a circle. I've got the notes A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And then if I put those, those accidentals in, if you will, I'd have A, A sharp, B, C, there'd be nothing in between, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, there'd be nothing in between those, F sharp, G, G sharp, and then back to A, doing an octave. And that's what would cover the entire piano, would be those notes, okay? So we just have to remind ourselves that B and E, at this point, B and E, they don't have sharps. B goes directly to C, and E goes directly to F. Now, if you need to, you could take a little bit of time and try and absorb that idea, but what we're going to do is I'm gonna show you how that applies to the fretboard. So if I was to take the sixth string, for instance, now the sixth string when tuned standard is the note E. This is your E string. So if I was to press on the first fret of the sixth string, I'm raising the pitch by one note. Well, if we think about what we just talked about, what comes after E? And the answer would be F, okay? Not E sharp, because at this point, there's, there's no such thing as E sharp. We would run directly to F. 
So this note would be F. Now you may have played chords before, like an F bar chord or something, and now you understand that that note is F and why that relates to, excuse me, the F chord that we're playing right here. Okay? So if we move up again, this note right here would be the next note after F. Well, what comes after F in our musical alphabet? And the answer would be F sharp, because there's a, there's a black key behind the F, right? Again, always remember, everybody gets a sharp except for B and E, which spells the word B. Okay? So we have E, which goes directly to F, and then F sharp, and then G, because F sharp would go directly to G. Now what would come after G? And if you said G sharp, you are correct. And then A, and what comes after A? A sharp, you are correct. And then what comes after that? B, and then directly to C, because we have to remember B and E spells the word B, those two notes don't get sharps. So we have C, and then C sharp, D, D sharp, and then we get to the two dots, we have E all over again. So we have E, E, which means the rest of the guitar now is gonna be an octave of the, higher than the first part. So zero and 12 would be E. One and 13 would be F. Two and 14 would be F sharp and so on. So that's how the guitar works. So we're really gonna just at this point deal with zero to 12 trying to get used to those notes, okay? So the first thing is just trying to wrap your head around the idea of memorizing those notes. And then the second part is trying to learn to apply it to your guitar. Now, I used to teach this a lot to students back when I did a lot of private guitar lessons. And if I showed the student how to do this, that student then would come back the next week and I would say, okay, find B. And they would count up until they find B. Find D, and they would count up until they find D. So I was thinking, well, how could I find an easier way for them to memorize these notes that don't require them to have to count up all the time? How could they just memorize these? And so what I did was came up with a little trick that you can use to memorize the odd numbered frets, which are where your dots are. Now you might not have a dot at the first fret and I don't either, okay? But if I think one, three, five, seven, and nine. Now we know 12 is gonna be the octave, but we have one, three, five, seven, and nine. So let's memorize those notes just thinking about the odd numbered frets, the ones with the dots. So zero is E, of course. So let's go to the first fret. We know that's F. This is F sharp. This is G. So what you do is you start memorizing F and G. One and three. F, G. And even if you just take five minutes and just think about that. F and G, one and three. And visualize it in your head. I mean, I, I know it seems silly, but it really is that easy. Just try and think about those, F and G. Now, if we go to the next one, go to the fifth fret, this one is going to be A, because we had G, G sharp, A. So, so far, this is quite convenient. We have F, G, A, our prime notes, one, three, five, F, G, A. So again, you could take a few minutes and just think about that and study that in your head. F, G, A, one, three, five. So and somebody could quiz you, what's at the fifth fret? A, what's at the first fret? F, what's at the third fret? G, and you just get those straight in your mind. Let's keep going. If we go to the seventh fret, we have B. F, G, A, B, because A sharp is in the middle, there's B. Now this is where this changes, okay? It's been really convenient up to that point because F, G, A, and B have all lined up with those odd numbers. But B, if we remember what we were talking about before, about the, the keys on a piano, B goes directly to C right here. So C is a space. C sharp is actually on the dot. But here's what we do. D is on the space on the other side of that. So if we memorize that C and D surround that ninth fret, that last dot before the two dots, C and D surround it. So we have F, G, A, B, C, and D. F, G, A, B, C, and D, okay? And I always tell this story, but I had this little little girl that was in guitar lessons, and I was teaching her how to do this, and I, I did this, and she called it rabbit ears. And so for the last 20-some years, that's what I think of this as, right, whenever I teach this. So F, G, A, B, C, and D, 
Okay, so you just start off by memorizing 1, 3, 5, 7, 8, and 10. F, G, A, B, C, and D. F, G, A, B, C, and D. Memorize the prime notes first, because then when you need to go back and memorize or, or find where the sharp is, and we're going to deal with the flats in just a second here as well. If F is here at the first fret and G is here, then in between the two is F sharp. If G is here and A is here, in between those two is G sharp, A sharp, right? So if I know where my notes are, this is C and D, C sharp, okay? Now, if you've heard of flats before, we always think of sharps, sharps as moving up and flats move down, okay? So if we think about it, if we have F and we have G, in between we have F sharp, Okay, because we're moving up from the F. But what if we move backwards from the G? We'd have G flat. F sharp and G flat are the same note. They're two different names for the same note. It's called an enharmonic. Okay, so what's awesome here is that you can actually learn all the notes and a little bit more about your theory if you don't really know anything about music theory is understanding that if you do have a sharp, you have an opposite flat that you can call it. So if we think about it right here, if we have G and A, we have G sharp and A flat. G sharp, A flat. A and B, A sharp, B flat. A sharp, B flat. Now, depending on, you know, your your history of education with music, you know, learning how to play piano or clarinet or something like that, you might be thinking to yourself, well, we, we don't really say A sharp very often. We say B flat, and that's absolutely true. And we're not going to get into all the whys of that right now. But the great thing about this is now you can understand that they really are the same thing. And if it's more common to say B flat, then we can certainly call it that. But if we do uh, refer to A and B here, we know that we can call this A sharp or B flat. So that kind of resolves the problem that we have with understanding accidentals, okay? So again, if we go back to the idea of you learning 1, 3, 5, 7, 8, and 10, F, G, A, B, C, and D. And again, somebody might quiz you on this. What's at the 5th fret? What's at the 7th fret? What's at the 10th fret, right? Do the prime ones first. Get those solid in your brain before you ever worry about the secondary notes, the sharps or flats, I'm telling you, it's a lot easier if you just study, and you you could learn these notes in a very short amount of time if you just every day s sat and studied it, thought about it a little bit. Maybe you have your guitar with, maybe you don't. But you can still think about those, one, three, five, seven, eight, and 10, F, G, A, B, C, and D, and shake them up, have somebody ask you, what's at the third fret? What's at the seventh fret? What's at the first fret? What's at the 10th fret? And the quicker you get at being able to answer those questions, the better you know them. Okay, then you've got the stuff in between. If F is at the first fret, what's at the second fret? And you could say F sharp or you could say G flat. All right, so that's one way of being able to memorize each one of the six strings on the guitar. If you studied exactly what we just talked about on the sixth string and maybe spent, who knows? I mean, it might take you a week to learn those notes. It might take you a month to learn those notes. It all depends on how much time you spend really focusing on it. Slow it down and practice it. Think about it. Study it. Okay. Get it. Get it straight in your head as you as you're as you're thinking about these things. So if you go to the fifth string, the same idea is going to start all over again. Except the fifth string is going to start with A, and you're going to do exactly the same idea. Now that doesn't mean that the one three five seven nine thing that we did is going to work for every string the same way. But you can start off doing that. Some, some notes are gonna line up really great and some strings are gonna have notes that don't line up quite as good. But don't worry about any of those strings until you've got the six string built out. Once you've got the six string, like the, you know, just automated, then go to the fifth string and start learning those notes. And don't worry about the fourth string until you've got the fifth string automated, okay? And then the next thing I wanna do, and I'm not trying to uh, take too much of your time, but I always tell students, once you learn a new string, Try and learn to cross-reference the notes that you're learning, right? So if you've learned that the fifth string, for instance, is A, so we learn that B is on the second fret of the fifth string, which it is, because this would be A sharp or B flat, A, A sharp, or B flat, and then B. So I'd want to learn that B is on the second fret of the fifth string, and B is also on the seventh fret of the sixth string. Or 
F, for instance. Here's F on the sixth string, and here's F on the fifth string. Now they're an octave different, but they're both Fs. And I would learn that by studying each one of these strings. So if I cross-reference each one of these as I go, I'm going to start learning how they relate to each other, how each string relates to the past string as far as the notes go. Okay? Now the last thing I'm going to give you, and if that's enough, you can turn the video off and you could be done with that. Okay? But here's one last thing I want to show you that makes for kind of a quick find if you need to find some other notes on your guitar and maybe you don't have all these strings memorized just yet but you still need to find where A is for instance on the guitar. Here's a really cool thing that you can do. If we go up to the fifth fret of the sixth string we know that this is A. Now what I'm going to do is give you a, a little on-screen graph here that's going to show you these notes. Now if this is A, if I go down to the seventh fret of the fourth string, that's also A. That's an octave. And if I go down to the first string, fifth fret, that's also an A. That's another octave. Now, you might know that the sixth string is E and the first string is E. So anything you do on the sixth string can be replicated on the first string, right? Six and one. So A, A, and A. So what you do is you memorize those. And, you know, you don't have to play it fast or anything, but you memorize where those are visually in, in your head. So if you needed F, well, as long as you can find F on the sixth string, you can find F on the fourth string and on the first string. Or G. Or B. Okay, so let's go back to the A idea. So here's our A. Those are our notes. Now, there, those notes exist all over the guitar, so I'm going to show you a couple other little ideas that might help you here, okay? So if we take those notes again, A, A, and A, I'm going to take this note right here. I'm going to put my first finger on there, and now I've got an octave of that A that exists on the 10th fret of the second string. So I'm skipping a string again in between. So this note and this note are the same note. They're going to sound a little different because the string tension is different, right? There's all kinds of different little things that go into that. The thickness of the string is different, right? But they are the same note. So now I've learned A, and then I can also find that A. Well, if I take this A right here and put my first finger on that, I can head all the way up to the fifth string, and I've got another A. So this exercise isn't really about how fast you can play them, it's can you see them. As you look at your guitar, can you see these A's on your guitar? Okay, let's keep going. So if I go to the 12th fret here, which remember is the same as a zero, I can go from 12 to 14 on the third string, which would be the same as going zero to two in the lower octave. So now I have A's. And I'd want to just study that, not just play it, but actually study that and be able to visualize that on my guitar. Okay, let's keep going. So we just did our A's here. If I put my first finger right there, now I've got A, of course. On the sixth string on the 17th fret is another A. And the 17th fret of the first string. Those two notes are octaves of the ones we started with. Okay, so I've got... So now I'm starting all over again one octave higher. And so on. Now that also means, of course, I can go backwards here. So I know I'm kind of rushing through this because I don't want to waste your time, but what you could do is just take a little piece of that and just study it. You don't have to absorb all of it at once. Just take a little idea. Maybe just learn this first position right here and then learn the second one and kind of learn how to visualize those together. And it's a great visual tool for trying to find a note quickly on a string that maybe you're not quite as familiar with. If you're looking for, again, the note B, right? So you're thinking, okay, well, I got to find a B here. That's what I'm looking for. Or 
you know, something else, something across the fretboard that maybe you haven't quite gotten to, or it's just, it just makes more sense in your head to find it really quick that way, as opposed to memorizing the notes on each string. Now, for me, it isn't either or, it's, it's kind of both. I mean, it's just a great way of being able to look at the guitar a little bit differently. So hopefully that helps you a little bit in trying to learn the notes that are available on the guitar, understanding what octave means and, and harmonic and different things like that. Um, and then also learning each one on each string, cross-referencing those notes, and then learning the notes across the guitar. I call it the unison octave trick, and it's not really a trick, but because some of the notes are, are octaves, and some of the notes are unison, they're the same notes, right? So it's just a nice way of being able to kind of see the guitar from sort of a, a spider web sort of point of view as opposed to all of the notes. So hopefully that helps you a little bit in your study. Please uh, let me know if there's anything I could do for you. Please comment below and let me know if um, this helped you at all. Do me a favor, subscribe to the channel and share the video with somebody that you think might benefit from it. And uh, if you like my, my guitar teaching style, go ahead and check out guitarzoom.com and see some of my guitar courses. So take care, uh, have a great day and I'll talk to you soon.